In many European countries, multiculturalism has become a dirty word. Whether we think of the chancellor in Germany who called multiculturalism a failure, uh, the former president of France, Nicolas Sarkozy, David Cameron in the United Kingdom, uh, various politicians across the continent who have all questioned multiculturalism. Part of this comes from the fact that, again, for many Europeans, multiculturalism means parallel societies that don't interact. And that's not the Canadian vision. What is also really interesting about differences and similarities between Canada and Europe is that on the ground, in many European cities, there are actually policies of multiculturalism. Because multiculturalism means recognition and accommodation of difference. And if we go to a city like Berlin, or if we go to a city like Amsterdam, Paris, London, there's all kinds of accommodations being made in schools, in hospitals, and in the interactions people have on the streets. But what is quite different is in the Canadian context, the very highest thought leaders talk about multiculturalism in a positive way. And so that sets a tone for society and for political discourse that is quite different in the European context. In terms of thinking how things might change uh, if we look forward, if we wanted to reimagine societies, if we believe that immigrants in Europe are not going to disappear tomorrow and that their children are going to be born and grow up in Europe, then we have to figure out how do we reimagine European societies in a way that are more inclusive. One way of doing this is to think about educational curricula. A real uh, transformation in Canada was the way that history and social studies were taught. If you look at older textbooks, there is one authoritative voice that tells a uh, homogenous story of the country. If you look at textbooks today, often they'll have multiple voices that provide different perspectives on history. They'll focus on the contributions, social, scientific, political, of people of different backgrounds and faiths. And so it's a celebration of the nation in the accomplishments of various people. We can imagine this already happening in European countries, but probably it needs to be ramped up to the next level if we were to think about what we would do in the future in terms of promoting multiculturalism. There are debates among academics as to whether pluralism policy or multiculturalism might hurt the economic integration of immigrants. I don't think that there is strong evidence, one way or another, to show that multiculturalism has any effect on economic integration. I think that labor market policy and educational systems are much more important. But ultimately, whether you want to think through multiculturalism and pluralism policy, part of that choice is a moral choice. If immigrants are here to stay, and we believe that they have a legitimate right to stay in the country, then we want to think about how we can include them. And one way of including them is through full membership, citizenship, or just even just social inclusion. And I think here, the research is very clear that multiculturalism and pluralism policy helps to make that inclusion possible. <laughs>